Between 1986 and 1993, the Archaeological Survey of India was among the few agencies in the world to remain in Angkor in spite of the war that raged about them. Many of the sites in Angkor Wat have survived due to the painstaking and laborious efforts of the ASI. With the discovery and restoration of the Angkor Wat, tourism is the biggest foreign exchange earner for the country and Cambodia is now poised to take giant strides of progress and prosperity. And a partner in its endeavor is the ASI and India. Once known as the Spice Islands, Indonesia is a country of nearly 17,000 islands spread along the equator. But the seas have also facilitated maritime trade between India and Indonesia. The Ramayan performance, set against the backdrop of the majestic Prambanan temples, is a major attraction for all visitors. It is performed by Indonesian artists with traditional musical accompaniment. Laos or Lanzang, the land of a million elephants, is a country of only six million people. A unique example of the harmonious blend of Buddhism and Hinduism is the elaborate wood panels in the Vats. The Ramayana is a popular dance drama that is regularly presented in Luang Prabang. The show begins and the slow graceful movements of the artists hold the audience in thrall. Here in Luang Prabang, the actors perform the Ramayana, seemingly perfectly at home even as the people are transported to another time and age to India. In 1993, for the first time, three Indian railway surplus meter gauge diesel locomotives were contracted on a wet lease basis on Malaysian railways through Irkon. Trained technicians and spare parts required for maintenance of the locomotives were supplied from India. As part of Malaysia's drive towards modernization, the government is determined to create a generation of information technology savvy professionals. One of the projects that is supposed to spur and transform the economy into a knowledge-based one is the Smart School flagship. And uh, in contributing to the Smart School flagship is NIIT, an Indian company. In the Malaysian headquarters of the NIIT, skilled professionals work to develop the creative software for primary schools. As with many of the countries in Southeast Asia, Philippines too is eager to create an IT literate generation. India has been able to provide numerous centers where young people receive training in computer technology. The capital, Manila, has a large community of Indians. Outside of working hours, Indians and Filipinos come together to enjoy the many festivals that both countries share. Singapore and India have traditionally enjoyed close relations due to historical and cultural ties. In recent times, both countries established a joint study group to look into establishing a comprehensive economic agreement. Both countries also hope to consolidate and expand cooperation in areas such as science, biotechnology and information technology. It is a meeting place where India and Singapore have frequently come together for mutually beneficial collaborations. India and Thailand have long enjoyed good trade relations and bilateral trade has been growing steadily. The two countries have so much in common historically and culturally that it is hardly surprising that they also share the modern, dynamic and progressive platform of the 21st century. Indian investment in Thailand is in relatively high-tech and capital-intensive areas. Indo-Vietnamese ties go back many decades when Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and Ho Chi Minh cemented a friendship based on mutual trust and respect. Since then, both Vietnam and India have helped and shared knowledge with each other in various fields. Madam Quinn went to India under an Indian Council for Cultural Relations program. She learned Bharatnatyam and other Indian dance forms. 
Today, she teaches other young Vietnamese girls the intricacies of Bharatnatyam, a shining example of how cultural differences are bridged by the universal language of music and dance.